X transsexual visits hell. My name is Kiatisuk Sukul. I am a former transsexual from Thailand now living in Helsinki, Finland. I had to leave my country Thailand because I did not have the religious freedom to be a Christian. From my mother's womb, my mother wanted me to be a girl. Because I was born a male child, she spoke words of curses, not accepting what God wanted. God has determined that I should be born a man, but because of my mother's rejection, I began to behave like a girl. When I turned 15, I started taking female hormones. I suffered mocking, bullying and prejudice from the boys in school. My parents were poor and live in the countryside. They realized that my voice was tuning feminine and my body shape was transforming to that of a woman. My parents saw the possibility of making money and encouraged me to enter into prostitution. At 16, I started prostituting with several men. I gave some of my earnings to my parents. I saved the rest of the money to fulfill my dream of sex change. By the age of 20, I had enough money to do the penile removal surgery. I went through psychological treatment before surgery. I went to a special sex change hospital to have the surgery. The doctor advised me that I could be gay without having to remove my male genitalia. I told him that I want to change since this genital organ does not belong to me, it was a mistake that God gave me a male body. Nature was cruel to me, my female soul is in a wrong male body. I want to get married and have children, I want to be a mother. The doctor said, the removal surgery is irreversible. I went to the operating table and took the anesthesia. Hours later I woke up being a happy and fulfilled woman. I started working in bars, streets, and nightclubs program. Wherever there is sex tourism I was there. Men from various countries came out with me. I made lots of money, but most of that money went into the hands of the nightclub owners. They had to pay a vast amount of money for the authorities to leave them alone. They had to bribe police and many corrupt government officials even though they know it is illegal. The nightclubs in Thailand make over $300 million a year from the prostitution of transsexuals. Those who work in these companies do not get rich, but they get a good life. In Thailand, men who change their sex are called lady boys. There are shows with sexy women and the lady boys catering to the tourist market. This is one of the spin-offs of the rotten transvestite prostitution. I supported my family with the money from the sex work and lady boys shows. Thailand has the largest population of transsexuals in the world. The country sex change surgeries are cheaper than elsewhere. The country is poor and the youth population has limited job opportunities. And the solution to survival is to become a transsexual. Any foreigner who came to Thailand will not know how to differentiate a lady boy from a real woman. The lady boys have been taking female hormones since adolescence so as not to grow beards and develop male traits. Then they remove the testicles and in place, a vagina is built. Many males who did the sex change surgery have repented. My friends who became lady boys tried committing suicide, as they regretted their decision. Many of my friends had no choice and turned into women so they would not starve. Being transsexuals gave them an income to sustain themselves in a country where there are few job opportunities. Some friends of mine regretted the sex change, went to the doctor to fix it and go back to being males. But the doctors said the sex change was irreversible, there is no way to restore their manhood. Because of this, several of my friends committed suicide. I had not regretted the change. A boy named Chanarong fell in love with me thinking I was a woman. At that time I had a second identity with a female name. He never suspected anything since my genital surgery left me like a woman. I could not get pregnant because I did not have a womb. My dream was to have an egg with a uterus. I was willing to pay a lot of money for doctors to put a living woman's womb in me. But science still could not do that. I did not get pregnant and my boyfriend started to distrust me, asking questions whether I was sterile or a transsexual. I had no choice and I revealed my identity. If it were in any country that knew about my identity, I would have lost my boyfriend. But here in Thailand men are accustomed to dating transsexuals because of their similarity to a woman. The problem is that transsexuals cannot bear children. And most men who dream of having children would never stay with transsexuals. These men only seek transsexuals for a love affair. Some men who have no job and cannot support a woman with children avoid getting married so they do not procreate. They choose transsexuals who cannot have children and go to live together. 
These men have no responsibilities to have children and are jobless. They take advantage of the transsexuals who work in bars, streets, and nightclubs to support them. I lived with my boyfriend Chanarong. He did not want me to work at a nightclub. He supported me and we were together for three years. My feminine feelings surfaced inside me. I felt that a woman was born. Something evil convinced me of that. My boyfriend wanted to be a father. I could not have children. And because of that he humiliated me and said that I was not a woman, he called me an abnormal and scientific experience. I was very hurt and I went back to sex work secretly. I lied saying I'd gotten a different job. Many women also lied that they had gotten a job, they hid the fact that they went into prostitution. When they got sexually transmitted diseases, they passed on the diseases to their husbands. My boyfriend saw me on the street doing shows. I went back to the house and packed my bags, I was leaving. My friend named Sumal is a transsexual. She became involved with a man. She was the most beautiful lady boy in the neighborhood. Her beauty surpassed even many women. How could a man turn into a beautiful woman? Her boyfriend grew jealous of her hanging out with another friend. He murdered my friend. My life began to get difficult, I was in depression. I did not want to know more about relating to men because I did not have the ability to bear children. Several men who lived together with the transsexuals ended the relationship by living with real women, fulfilling their dreams of having children. Many transsexual friends in order not to lose their boyfriends, had to accept their boyfriends having relationships with normal women to have children. I began to think that I should have accepted my male body as it was before. Although I have become a woman my body is still male. Confused, I began to relate to a lesbian woman. She wanted to give me a son, but I did not have the male reproductive organ. She broke up with me. I felt the pain in my soul. I started dating a transgender just like me, who also lived frustrated and depressed. My father, realizing my suffering, told me to travel to Europe. At that time I was sick and dependent on antidepressant medicines. I packed my bags and traveled to Finland, a different country where no one knew me. Everyone there thought I was a woman. Men took an interest in me, but my fear of relating made me back off. A man approached me and began to talk about Jesus. I had never heard of this name in Thailand. Everyone in my country is a Buddhist. This man told me about the eternal life that only Jesus could give. I never felt as much of an impact as I did in that message. No Buddhist with his wise teachings could attract me. This man convinced me to convert to Christianity. He looked at my female appearance and knew that I was a man. The Holy Spirit revealed my life and the spiritual condition that I was in. He said that Jesus is going to raise a warrior to preach the word, this warrior is me. This man was the only one in that country who knew of my true identity. I took off the women's clothes and began to wear men's clothing. I went to a church near my apartment. I understood that God never makes mistakes when he determines who is going to be a man or a woman. God created man and woman, there is no third sex. When we try to change our nature that God created, everything begins to go wrong. Accept yourself as God created you, accept your color, your hair. Do not smooth your hair and do not paint, do not change the creation that God created in you. My biggest challenge was to go back to my country and face a Buddhist population. Buddhists are peaceful, but they do not accept being contradicted by the truth of God. Buddhism is a farce, a religion that leads nowhere. I started taking male hormones to change my body. I spent time outside my country to learn more about Jesus since in my country the gospel is not widely preached and shared. My parents were longing for me and they started calling me worried about my delay in returning. I told them that I am now a Christian and have reverted to becoming a man. I began to prepare my parents' minds about my change so as not to shock them. Months later, my body began to change, I was already looking like a man. I went back to my country and everyone was shocked by the change in my body. My friends did not accept the change in my body and clothes. My parents were already prepared to accept a new person. I began to talk about Jesus in that country, many of them from my village including my family converted to Christ. When I started saying that Buddhism did not save, things started to get worse. The Buddhists began to persecute me because of the gospel. Men I had related to me while I was still a transsexual mocked me. My ex-boyfriend saw me as a man called me crazy. 
I was kidnapped by a group of men who did not accept my male transformation. I was all hurt by the beating I received from them. But I kept going. What made me cry was when I looked at my body and saw the genital mutilation I did. I was already freed from the feminine spirit. Now I wanted to get married and have children, but I could not. I was deeply sad and took several pills of depression. I was walking near my house when my eyes darkened. I fell to the ground banging my head on the stone. I was bloody and unconscious. When I looked to the left, I saw myself standing in front of my body. A white-winged being said, Fear not, you will not die. I still had no knowledge of what an angel is. As this winged being led me to the entrance of hell, he said, I know you are not accustomed to seeing angels, your country loves Siddhartha Gautama. I am Gabriel, the angel of God. That angel perceived my astonishment and calmed me down. We were at the portal of hell that had been opened to receive the souls. Millions of people died at that moment and entered through that gate. What scared me was when I saw millions of face descending to hell. The angel Gabriel explained the reason for the descent of many face into hell. Thailand is a country that adores the Buddha, there are very few Christians there. The angel told me that in my country there is no harvest of souls and that this country needs to be evangelized urgently. Foreign missionaries have evangelized this country with great timidity. The percentage of Christians is small because it is a country that has begun to be evangelized now. I've been worrying about this nation that's getting lost. They die and go straight to hell. The angel showed me millions of face in the infernal depths. Seeing these souls suffering in hell without having the chance to know Jesus, this scene tortured and cut my heart. I was up there watching the souls being thrown down. They fall from a great height upside down. From where they fell it was so high that there seemed to be no end. Standing at the door of hell, I saw everything that happened below. A bright and glorious light approached me. The angel came out of my presence and I put my hands over my eyes because of the brightness of the light. Minutes passed and the splendor of light diminished. I could see a man with a light body approaching me. He called me by my name, not the feminine, but the name I was registered when I was born, the name of my first identity. He called me the name my parents gave me. I was thrilled, I cried and I fell on my knees before his presence. The king of kings was before my eyes. He said, I am Jesus and today I blot out your past and present sins, from your transgressions, I will remember no more. Stand up. False Christians in hell. Jesus took my hands and lifted me up. Jesus led me to hell and showed me believing people just by considering themselves people who were in the church for the temporal interests and not for eternal things. Hell was full of believers who bore the title of Christian, but none of those I saw in hell were real Christians. These believers did not live the gospel. There were men and women who carried the title of a pastor but never was. Jesus took me out of hell and took me to Christian homes. Dangers of television. I contemplated the great destruction of their homes because of television. I also had a vision of many broken marriages. The Lord told me, these broken marriages that you saw are my people who have strayed because of this satanic technology. The Lord Jesus showed me millions of divorce demons that act through television and social networks. The purpose of these demons is to break family ties and cause disorder in homes. I looked at the television that was inside a pastor's residence. He did not sleep and it was already dawn. This pastor watched an action movie, an evil spirit entered his eyes. His personality was changed and his heart was as hard as stone. That pastor began to feel jealous of his wife who worked for a company. He followed his wife every day. One day he saw her talking to a colleague in her company. That pastor came home with a lot of hatred and jealousy. When his wife arrived home, he stabbed her eight times. She passed away and the pastor was arrested. In the vision, the Lord showed me that this pastor watched a TV series of betrayal and death every day without missing an episode. This series has influenced his mind to believe he may have betrayal in marriage and that the greatest revenge is to murder the traitor. I saw millions of dark shadows coming out of the television sets I saw in the homes of believers. The Lord said, these are the evil darts that come out of the television to hit mankind. The demons inside the television attack the people who watch the schedules. I saw the number 666 engraved on these darts. This is the mark of Satan that came off the television in the shape of 666 balls that hit the people's minds. 
Their minds are marked with the number 666 and they become impure when they watch the television. The Christians who watched TV had their minds marked with the number of the beast. The Lord told me that these have the mind of Satan and will not enter heaven. And many believers watch and they no longer have the mind of Christ. Because of television, many have their minds ill with depression, belittling themselves and suffering low self esteem. I asked, Lord, why is the television so evil? The Lord said, All that is bound on earth is bound in heaven. The servants of Satan also do the same, all that they bind on earth is bound in hell. The Lord showed me a network of thick television wires. These wires are spiritual and are connected behind the television. These spiritual threads have one part that enters the television and the other part of the wires go down into the earth. The Lord said, These wires that go down into the earth go to hell. The spiritual threads connect television and hell. That's why the induction of television is hellish. Their influence leads many to perdition. How many souls would be saved if they did not watch TV? The Lord Jesus took me to my house with a television. He said, My servant, I will prove to you the connection of television with hell. That thick thread you saw is the way to hell. And the television screen is the access portal. Jesus held my hand and together we entered the television through the screen. And we went down inside that thick spiritual thread. We descended at high speed into the wire. The television screen is the entrance and the thick wire was the path that led me to hell. I want to explain to the church that this thick thread is spiritual which we cannot see with the carnal eyes. Jesus allowed me to see several wires looking like thick cables. Those wires resembling giant cables are not the only entrances that give access to hell. There are several portals that lead to hell. The Lord showed me a large group of Christians watching television. Many children are in hell for watching television. Jesus told me that the technological environment destroys Christian values. Tele evangelists, compromises with TV companies. The Lord showed me evangelical pastors signing contracts with broadcasters to make TV programs. I saw in the written contract, it is forbidden to speak against cigarette, drinks, or against sensuality, homosexuality, transsexualism, lesbianism, and feminine beauty products like lipstick and makeup. The owner of the TV station makes a clause in the agreement with the televangelists that if violated, their program would be taken off the air. Television channels depend on the viewership of the audience. Any preaching against sin causes the audience viewership to fall. No one will want to watch a station that rebukes sin. Nor can you speak against the short clothes and hair dyes on a station. The channel has a contract with fashion companies and gives hair dyes. Vanity companies pay dearly for the broadcasters to let them present their commercials to the public who watch their ads. Any Christian preacher who speaks against vanity within television harms business commercials. The marketing that cigarette and beverage companies do on the broadcasting network generate huge profits for the channel. Any pastor who preaches against cigarettes and drinks will lose their contracts. The owners of the TV stations would not want to lose advertising money because of preaching. Any man of God who wants to preach against sin will not be given contracts in a television network. That explains how evil television is. The devil's creation in hell was designed to spread all sin on the face of the earth. I said, Lord, what are evangelicals going to do in these stations if they cannot preach the truth? Jesus answered me, Neither is the new wine of my word poured into the old wineskins of this world. Matthew 9:17. My word is the good news and all that is new cannot be preached in old wineskins. Television is old wineskin that will not support the new wine of my word. The television was made to contain the old wine of this world. The new wine of my word has to be stored in the new wineskins which are the altar of the church. What I saw in the clause of the broadcasting contract was the talk of healing, blessing, miracles, riches, self-help, self-esteem, prosperity and sentimental formulas. These doctrines are allowed to be preached because it increases the number of audiences to the broadcasters. Everything that can be said on television does not save to eternal life. Jesus said, You see my servant because television is Satan's. It is forbidden to speak of my truth. These men whom you saw preach in the stations are not my servants. They have no commitment to my word, they sign these evil contracts by committing to evil. They think of their stomach, well-being and making money. Abusing the word. When Jesus and I arrived in hell, 
I was in the valley of Christians who used the word of God not to edify but to kill the faith and pluck peoples out of serious churches. They were Christians who argue about the gospel, did not agree with anything, and spoke badly about other churches. Those who attack holy doctrine are also in hell. They are in that place because of their language. They spoke things that did not please God. Jesus said about the believers who scandalize his work by giving bad testimony. Corrupt judges are also in hell. Measurement of hell punishment. The balance serves to measure the number of weights. The higher the weight, the more the price will increase. All the evil that every person did on earth will be placed in the balance of divine justice. The greater the weighing of evil, the greater the punishment meted out to the evildoer. Soon all evil will be charged by Jesus. With the same measure the evildoers measured to others, the punishment will be measured back to them. Divisive Christians. The Lord Jesus showed me in hell Christians who did not know how to live with others. They did not accept the different personalities, they wanted everyone to be the same. These brothers had no harmony with the others and lived on the warpath. Because of the disunity, they were in hell. Ungrateful Christians. The Lord showed me a group of Christians in hell for being ungrateful. These brothers were like that when their ministries were being helped by other brothers. They did not see the good side of each brother. When the brothers stopped helping their ministries, they began to see flaws and defects and began to criticize them. Self-glorifying Christians. Other brothers are in hell for being proud of having helped the work of God. They compared themselves to other Christians and said in their hearts that they were better than them. They say to themselves that they do the work of God and the others do not, so they pride themselves that they deserve the biggest rewards. People of God, do not compare yourself with the other brothers. Do not feel bigger for doing more things in the play. Do not feel smaller because you cannot do more. The work of God is done according to the capacity of each one. For God, we are equal, after all, we will live in the same place. Nothing in me makes me better or worse than any other. We are a body of Christ alone. Evil technology created in hell. Jesus took me to a place in hell where the whole evil plan of destruction of the earth is architected. There I saw projects that will be invented for the earth. Jesus sent the devil who was there pulling the file drawer. I've seen several designs looking like electronic engineering works. The demon showed me and said that new technologies will be invented on earth to destroy mankind. The devil showed me the drawing of the first old black and white television was his images. Then he showed me the evolution of television, how it became more modern to attract more people to have them. Churches are being destroyed by such technologies. Sin separates from Jesus. Jesus said, those who draw near to me turn away from sin, for sin prevents a man from giving his whole life to me. Sin is a wall that separates man from me and when he dies with his sin, he comes to this place. Look at the people who are here. They cry out and ask for mercy. This is the place where all the people are separated from me by sin. Even when they die, their sins remain alive and their souls separate them from me. They have died with their sins and can no longer be redeemed. Their sins will always be the wall that separates me from them forever in this place. Valley of Transsexuals the Lord Jesus took me into the valley of the transsexuals, I also saw some of my friends there. I say that they are friends because they deny their masculine nature and turn their bodies to the feminine. I saw a transsexual friend of mine in hell. The demons tormented him and raped him. He was asking for help to get me out of that place. I could do nothing. Demons torment transsexuals with fire spears thrusting into their private parts. The demons scoffed, saying, you will suffer for having removed your male organs, your abominations, are looking like us. You despised taking the image of him who died for you. I've seen giant snakes coming into their holes for practicing anal sex. Transsexuals screamed in pain and writhed. Broken fellowship in churches. I had another vision with a broken ring in the middle. Jesus said, Satan has broken the binding of the church with me using his instruments of deception. He has destroyed my engagement with my people turning my bride away from me, breaking the spiritual covenant that I signed with the church on the cross of Calvary. The Lord showed me the disunity of the churches and of the men of God who came out of these churches so as not to congregate in the churches anymore. Those who do not congregate are out of the body of Christ and will lose their salvation because they are no longer members. They committed suicide in their spiritual lives by killing their communion with Jesus. Jesus said that the church is a spiritual body of this world. 
This body is connected to heaven through the blood of Jesus. The church is a living organism and we are every piece of the composition of that body. Just as no organs survive outside the body, the same thing as the Christian who dismembers the body of Jesus. The church is this body and the leaving member will die spiritually. Each member is connected with this living body, to which Jesus is the head of this body. Do not go without congregating in a church. False teachers and prophets. The Lord sent a warning to the true shepherds. He said, Tell the shepherds to teach the new converts because of the deceit of the false prophets. False teachers deceive people by capitalizing on their lack of knowledge of my word. The people were transformed into the ventriloquist dolls of these false shepherds. Snares of sin. The Lord showed me demons using what people like best to lay snares of sin. They are projecting their death traps, using baits of the pleasures of the world. The Lord showed me the window of the world. I have noticed that there are millions of both good and sinful things that cause destruction in the lives of people. There are many attractive and pleasurable things the world has to offer. Jesus said, all these are traps for death. There are three mortal enemies of the Christian who are, his flesh, the pleasures of the world and Satan. Satan needs the legality to be able to act, what he does is to induce. Without legality, Satan will have no strength to destroy. The fiercest enemy of Christians that Satan has is the world with its pleasures, modernity, prostitution, and money. The world has overthrown more believers than Satan himself. The world seduces my servants to death. But the worst mortal enemy is the flesh itself. The flesh does not want to obey my word, desiring the world. It is a struggle of the flesh and the spirit. The flesh wants to do the will of Satan, so he uses the world and the flesh to divert my servants. He works on personal desires, emotions, and feelings, offering all forms of pleasures in the world. All that the flesh desires, Satan uses in his behalf. Money has been the consuming gold of all flesh and the instrument of corruption of the world and of my word. False religions. The Lord showed me millions of hungry souls running after the truth. All were deceived by the sects. In my country, it is Buddhism that has deceived the masses. I have taken the gospel in this country without attracting attention. Christians who are free to speak about Jesus in their country, enjoy it. Do not stand still, do not use the gospel to deceive and raise money. In my country, there is no freedom to preach the gospel freely. I was transsexual and did not know that there was a hell of fire. If I died in this abomination I would be in hell today. God had mercy on me because I did not know the gospel and delivered me from this place. You who know the gospel and use it to deceive will pay a high price, and will not be judged innocent. Jesus told me about Satan's new strategies to win souls. Cults have won many souls for hell. These false religions are like barriers that prevent the gospel from being preached. Satan uses deception with religions to get out of the way of Jesus, he has worked in the four corners of the world. Many die and go to hell because of false religions. And my people are not fighting these lies, denouncing these works. Jesus showed me great deep holes being opened by the demons in every way of the Christians. They walked unnoticed from the danger ahead of the way without watching. All these fell into the pit of the abyss. You who are a Christian crumble the wall of sin that separates you from God. Approach him, whoever is a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. I have seen millions of demons working to keep people from asserting themselves in the ways of God. My brothers do not be concerned about being in the hierarchies in the churches. Positions in churches mean nothing to God. What frightens demons is to live a life obedient to the word of God. Live a spiritual life of communion with God. The shepherd is no greater than the deacon nor the elder than the younger of the church. In the spirit world, this does not matter. The greatest is the humble man who seeks God with all his heart. The little one before God becomes great and the one who magnifies himself becomes small for God. God does not accept positions taken from man, brothers anointed by their leaders. He accepts those whom he anoints and raises for his work. His anointed have values in the spirit world and bother the demons. Even if you do not have a position in your church, pray, God will inform you and put you on your feet. Jesus told me the last words thus, take my gospel to your country, free them from the fire of hell. Raised from the dead, when I woke up I was in the hospital. The doctors made great efforts to get me back to life since my heart had stopped. I know it was Jesus who brought me life. If he did not, 
Any medical effort would not succeed. Today I am freed and disgusted with my past. That depraved and sick nature no longer exists in me. I seek to live a holy and blameless life before God. The church people who admire me say, I want to be like you. I said, never want to be like me, I am flawed, be holier and more spiritual than me. Jesus is our mirror and the greatest example of imitation. I had to change my name one more time to the new name that Jesus gave me, Joshua. I do not have a church position, but Jesus asked me to do the work. I am currently living in Finland, but I have taken the gospel to my country. I have a team that evangelizes and helps people. Our evangelistic meetings are in the houses because in my country there are no established churches. To speak of Jesus in the streets of Thailand is a danger. The government and the authorities do not accept another religion other than Buddhism. My parents converted to Jesus and also some people close to my family. They have helped in the mission in my country. We meet in homes and in hidden places. Marriage. I always tortured myself for not having the male genital. The dream of marrying and having children came out of my heart. Which woman would marry a man with the female genital? A servant of God asked me to marry her. I told her about my male situation and that I could not get married. She replied that sex is momentary and fleeting, but love is eternal and marriage to God is indissoluble. The couple has to love themselves to death regardless of disability. She said her mother was not shocked when her father had a car accident, becoming paraplegic. Her mother continued to love her father. She said that she learned a lot from her mother who took care of her father. She always takes him in a wheelchair for sightseeing in the city. His father's paralysis never stopped her mother's love. This wonderful woman is my wife. Together we adopted a child. I end my testimony saying that the peace of God will remain in our lives. Ex transsexual visits hell. My name is Kiatisuk Sukal. I am a former transsexual.